Developed by the Brazilian studio Peeping Games, Maiden Cops is the first entry from these guys in the genre and promises an authentic arcade experience with gorgeous pixel art. The game has been released today for Steam, but fret not, my friends, because a version for consoles is coming later this year. Today, we will take a look at this game and check if Maiden Cops is more than a beautiful pair of. But before all that, hi, I am Savino, and welcome to the Flying Kick channel. Apparently, things in Maiden City aren't as good as they should be. After a big explosion in the prison center orchestrated by a group called The Liberators, the city was overrun by bandits who wished to ensue chaos and take control over the population of Maiden City. But of course, every city has its heroes and, in Maiden City, the police force is glad to fill this role. With the help of three young and beautiful police women, Priscilla, Nina and Mega, your mission is, unsurprisingly, to beat the heck out of everyone crossing your path. The story here is once again your good and old beaten up story where a city is in peril and the only way to help it is to beat a gang with hundreds of members. In Maiden Cops, the story will be told through speech bubbles between our protagonists and their enemies or boss. There is some comedy over everything and it worked for me most of the time. I mean, I'm not really the target audience when it comes to the story, but I enjoyed all the silliness. Yes, it's all very silly and in no moment the game tries to take itself too seriously, which is great because with all the cartoony and colorful visuals, it would be hard to believe in a more serious tale. And the visuals are pretty good, from the backgrounds to the characters, everything here is extremely detailed and made with a lot of care. The backgrounds are very nice and while they don't have enough parallax scrolling to make me happy, they still have their charm. Ok, parallax scrolling aside, the backgrounds are gorgeous and very well done, they are filled with small details, people doing things and excellent reflections on glasses, I mean, this is a very gorgeous game like I haven't seen in a while. There is even a level here that I believe some beaten up fans will probably recognize, tell me in the comments if you do. Oh yeah, and I hate this level as much as I hate in that other game, please don't make this a new trend of beaten ups. Other than that, this level looks awesome, especially with the beautiful cityscape in the background. There are in total 7 levels in the game, all with 3 sub-areas spread across Maiden City and they are as varied as you can wish. The level, these levels can be a bit long, but let's discuss that a little ahead. Oh, and of course, there are the characters. Starting with our three protagonists that are extremely well made. The pixel art here is outstanding and not only the art is fantastic, but also the animation is incredibly good. You can see every detail of their moves and, well, movements, which are a plenty in this game. Yeah, the dudes behind this game know their target audience very well. Your enemies also have the same level of detail and the big bosses are also amazing. Artistically, this is probably one of the best games we will see this year with a style that is unique and not derivative of other games that apparently have become the new standard of pixel art. While not as unique as the art style, the soundtrack here is pretty good. The tracks cover a lot of styles ranging from rock to samba and the compositions are thrilling enough to keep your blood pumping while you play. Especially the tunes where the guitars take the lead, which is pretty amazing and something that I was not expecting for this game. I will be the first to say that some of compositions are a bit slow for this type of game, but the musician is clearly very talented and you probably will enjoy the tunes as I did. The sounds and voices in this game are also very good, the game has some screams and grunts here and there, but unfortunately there are no voiceovers for the girls in the story. I mean, this would skyrocket the game's budget, so their absence is understandable. The hits are also nice and they sound more like slaps than punches, which is very fitting for the tone of the game and will not ruin your fun at all. Overall, the game is excellent when it comes to the graphics with some gorgeous pixel art, excellent animations and a great soundtrack, but yeah, you know all of this is worthless if the combat is not on par, so let's talk about it. In Maiden City, you will be able to tag along with a friend in local co-op, 
only, and you can pick one of the three main characters to play. Nina, who is the fast and weak character, Priscilla, who is your all-around girl, and Mega, who is your grappler. All of them have the same basic set of commands. You have a jump, an attack, a block slash pickup button, you can run by tapping twice, you have a vertical dodge, you can grab your enemies by getting close to them, and you also have three different specials that are controlled by this bar right here. Aside from the basic stats like speed, strength, reach, etc., the specials are where your characters will differ the most. Each one of them has their own set of specials and each one has a different function in the game, bringing even more diversity to the gameplay. And the moment you understand how to properly use your specials is where the fun will really start. You can chain all of them together for a devastating attack, mix one with your basic combo or even use them to finish a cool juggle sequence that's all accompanied by some great hit stuns which will make you feel each one of your punches and kicks. Oh, and the girls have another interesting difference. Priscilla and Nina can pick up most weapons except the really big ones, while Mega can carry the big ones and nothing else. I mean, it makes the game feel pretty different when you play with her compared to any of the other ones, but the presence of the other weapons lying around on the floor was a sad reminder that I was missing something. Your enemies are pretty varied with a good selection of moves that will put your skills to the test, but yeah, this is also part of some of the problems in this game as we will see in a moment. Again, technically, the combat here is pretty good, you can feel the characters are very different from each other, even if you ignore the specials, and the attacks feel exactly as they should. Beating enemies up and down can be very rewarding, and learning how to mix and take advantage of your specials can lead to some awesome moments. It's a very good game in all aspects, except one that, unfortunately, really hurt the game in my opinion. I'm talking about the enemy AI, but I will keep the suspense for a while because I, I forgot to talk about the rest of the game's content and I found no good place to put it on the script, so yeah. As for the rest of the content, aside from the story mode, you have an arcade mode, you have a store where you can buy art, music, sheets and other stuff with the money you earn in game, and sure, you also have a bunch of skins to buy, which is an incentive to keep playing. There's also a very cool comic book talking a bit about the story of the girls, which is a nice touch. And back to the AI. In Maiden Cops, the AI can be pretty frustrating and you can notice it right at the beginning of the game. The first thing you notice is how fast all your enemies move. I mean, there is nothing wrong with having one blazing fast character, but in this game, even the tanks are fast. This wouldn't be a huge problem were it for the fact that, aside from your specials, you aren't equipped to deal with enemies that fast in big numbers. While your character is responsive thanks to the excellent controls, enemies can easily outpace you and start a mostly unstoppable attack. Aside from being incredibly fast, your enemies have one specific attack state that, when it triggers, you are basically screwed. Let me explain. You see, your enemies most of the time will be walking up and down the level like crazy ants. Suddenly, they change their stance and come like a rocket towards you and knock you down with an unstoppable attack. Note that I said unstoppable and not unblockable. You can block most of these attacks, but to interrupt them, you need to use your special move or some weapon. If you use your fists, you won't be able to hit them. For some reason, they are completely immune to your basic attacks, leaving you exposed to the attacker. And to make things worse, your block doesn't cancel any of your attacks. Another thing that bothers me here is that your enemies tend to attack you as soon as they enter the screen, so if you like to hang around the corner, chances are you will get hit a lot. But don't worry. If you like to stay in the middle, you will also take a lot of hits. To add salt to injury, enemies can hit you from a very long distance. Flying kicks will cross the whole screen and charging enemies can come in your direction vertically, hitting you wherever you are. So no matter where you stay on the screen, you can be hit without any chance of reaction. You can block these attacks, as I said, but with the block not cancelling your attacks, you will be taking a lot of unnecessary damage. Again, you can block these attacks, but when they come in two different directions, you won't be so lucky. Yes, you have a dodge, but unfortunately, while it has its usefulness, 
It is not as responsive as I wish. All of this, added to the enemy's incredible speed, will make most of the encounters a chore, where you will take hits no matter what you do to escape. Also, most enemies can attack you as soon as they get up, so if you knock an enemy down mid-combo, you can be sure she will hit you as soon as she gets up. This is a common feature in beat'em ups, especially in bosses or some key enemies, but here, most enemies can do this. There are some minor annoyances like these biker helmets that keep following you and can be extremely annoying in later levels, and how enemies simply aren't affected by some objects on the background while you are. A lot of this could be fixed if your special meter loaded a bit faster even at the cost of your special strength. Currently, it loads only when you hit enemies or take hits, but even so, it's not nearly enough for how many times you need them. More than once I was hit, heavens know from where, and had no way to defend myself from all the enemies on the screen because my special hadn't regenerated yet. I mentioned earlier that the levels are a bit long, and not only because of their actual length, but also because your encounters will, more often than not, take a long time to finish thanks to all the blocking and dodging you will have to do, and all the times you will be knocked down by a single hit. The bosses also can take a long time to beat, not only thanks to their resilience to attacks, but also because enemies will spawn all the time, make the arena feel very crowded and almost impossible to control. There are some confusing choices regarding the game's UI that are a little bit baffling. Let's say you're playing with Priscilla and for some reason want to change to me in a simple, right? You quit the level, pick a new character, choose the level you were and it's done, right? So. Why not complicate this process? In Maiden Cops, when leaving the game, you have two options, title screen and Maiden Over. If you pick title screen, you will return to the title screen, but if you try to select any of the previous levels you played or pick another character, you won't be able to. All you can do is resume your mission with the same character at the same level. To pick another character or another level, you must select Maiden Over, go to your save file, delete it, and then you can pick a new character and select any level you have completed. If you don't delete your save, you will be brought to the reward screen from the last section and there's nothing much you can do with it. It's an overcomplicated and not intuitive system at all. I don't know, a new game continue and level selection option would go a long way to make things simple here. In the end, Maiden Cop is a game that, for me, hangs a bit in the balance. The game has a lot of things in its favor and, as I said multiple times, this is technically a great achievement for any team. The art is great, the controls are responsive, the soundtrack is awesome. Just tweak the AI and remove some of the enemies' iframes and this will be a blast. But even with this small annoyance, I still think Maiden Cops is a good time. And if you take in consideration that the game costs only 10 bucks, there's no way you can do wrong with this one. I can easily recommend it. And that's it for the review, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at this gorgeous game. And don't forget to let in the comments if you have plans to get this one. I will be back this week with a couple more reviews for you guys. And in the meantime, I hope you all have an awesome day. And remember, keep it up.